Chicago was a walk I took through the destroyed library building of the University of Utah. Uh, the books were, um, of, of all those literary lights gathered at Capsha once upon a time, were all here. So were the invaluable books of other 300,000 books gone up in flames. There was something else there, too, namely a very young me writing poems at, uh, at those long reader's tables. I raised the collar of my coat and looked out through what used to be a grand window, but now was only an archway open to the sky. <coughs> they blew off the library during the revolution. Volunteers with spades and brooms below were beginning, beginning to slow and painfully process of clearing the debris. It snowed over to them, giving brilliance to the black and white world where they moved. It seemed to me as I looked out the window of my bygone youth that everything had come to a standstill in a single frame. Time had stopped. I can't swear that a tear didn't streak, streak hot and salty down my cheek. It broke my reverie and brought me back to the present. It's, um, it's, it's really problematic to, to leave because uh, this the sense of space is never, uh, is never the same. And he says, next, time, next morning I was ready to leave Bucharest. The past three days when, when had been remarkable. Even those things that under normal circumstances were banal and uninteresting, like watching television or having lunch, had been made sharply significant by the time. Time itself was stretched to accommodate the rapid unfolding of a thousand events, as if in a fairy tale where the hero grows ten days in a year, a minute was a day, a day was a year. Three years had just passed in three days, but my heart was still yearning for the real return to the town of my birth, Sibiu, in the Transylvanian mountains. My childhood was there, and the friends of my childhood. I wanted also to see my Uncle Richard and my Aunt Elena, my only living relative still in my homeland. I heard that they had been moved from their house in the apartment building in the town of Alba Junia near Sibiu. An address with several long scribbled numbers had reached me by, uh, via one of our old neighbors who now lives in Canada. They had no telephone and they were very old. I had written to them but there had been no answer. I did not know if they were still living.